Hey there, so in this video we are going to solve out a very common problem faced by almost all developers who are trying to work with the GSM SIM 800L module. The problem is that even if the power supply is alright, the GSM module it's not powering on or even if it powers on then it cannot connect itself or it cannot register itself to the network. Well I have also faced this problem myself and searched a lot over the internet and believe me in maximum of the places. It was stated that uh, we should use a capacitor or a voltage regulator to provide the proper power supply to the GSA module. I have also tried them but they didn't work and they made the circuit more complex, more messy. So our motto in this video is to solve this problem out in the simplest way and in this video follow me I will solve this problem out without using a capacitor, without using a voltage regulator and the circuit will be 100% working which means the GSM module, the SIM inside the GSM module would get connected to the network. So this is our SIM 800L GSM module with an Airtel SIM inside, I am using an Airtel SIM inside. This is our LiPo battery charging circuit with 4 terminals, out plus B, B plus, B minus and out minus. And uh, here we are using uh, this LiPo battery with an 800mAh capacity. Okay, so give a look at the pin out of the GSM module we are using over here. So uh, from this side, the uppermost one or the first one is for the antenna, the net, then the VCC or the power supply positive, then the reset pin, then the RX and the TX respectively, and the last one is for the ground. Well, on this side too, you can see there are six pins. Well, they are for the speaker, the ring, the microphone positive, microphone negative, etc they will not be in use much right now we may discuss about them in detail later so now just let's power up this gsm module using our lipo battery and the charging circuit so here i have included a schematic if you like you can see it well the word that one is coming from the b plus of the charging circuit it's fed to the positive terminal of our lipo battery similarly the one with the B minus should be connected with the negative terminal. Here we connect it. Okay, so find the two left at the output plus and the output minus respectively, which needs to be fed to the VCC and the ground of our GSM module. So we need a couple of jumper wires to connect them with uh, our GSM module. Well, you can see that the from this side, the second and the last, they are for the VCC and the ground respectively. This one is the VCC and this one is the ground. Well, so by convention, we are using a red wire for the VCC and a black one for the ground. So now let's connect them to the out plus and the out minus of the LiPo charging circuit. Here I put the output plus and uh, this one is the output minus. Hey, so we are all done. But see, the GSM module is not even turning on. It's not even turning on. The LEDs aren't blinking. So there must be some problem. So let's solve it. Uh, well, the problem was with the uh, well, the problem was with the wear length. This is because uh, I, I have seen in many places over the internet. I, I have such problem. It didn't power on. I searched the net. And in maximum places, it showed that the wear length should be shortened. Uh, shortening the wear length to decrease the resistance, which would in turn result in powering on of the circuit. Well, so I tried shortening the length of the wear. I just uh, used a single jumper wear to connect the ground and I fit the positive terminal of the battery directly to the VCC pin of my module. So now let's see what happens. Well, so here I am using a single jumper wire, a battery. So let's plug one side of this jumper wire to the negative terminal of your battery and the other side to the ground pin of your GSM module. So here's the ground pin. So the negative terminal of the battery is being now connected with the ground of a GSM module. The rest left is the VCC of the GSM module and the positive terminal of your battery. Now just let's connect them directly to shorten the wear length. 
So here's how we connect it. Nice. You can see, friends. Uh, okay, so you can see that the LED is uh, blinking, but the problem is the SIM 800L is still now not registering to the network. See, it's powering off automatically, then powering off again. For six times, the LEDs, uh, the LEDs, uh, the LED is blinking for six times, and it is reswitching. It it is restarting automatically. This means that it is still not connected to the network, and there should be some power shortage problems for which it is restarting automatically after six or seven times of blinking. So this is also indeed not the true solution. So take four used resistors and uh, cut their legs off with a scissor. So here I take four pieces. So what I did is I took a breadboard and make connection like this so see one going through the positive line of a breadboard and another one going to the negative line of our breadboard we can take two for positive and negative we can take two vertical lines well uh, so this is the order in which should be kept and there should be a difference of three dots between them see okay so nice we will put it in such a way onto the breadboard such that the ground of a module gets connected to that negative line and the vcc of a module gets connected to the positive line so here how we, here's how we connected it nice now the last work left is to provide the lipo battery voltage to this positive and negative terminals or the positive and negative lines of our breadboard okay so now let's power it up with our battery and let's see what happens hey that's nice see the LED is blinking once in every three seconds which means your GSM module is ready for the connection it's connected to the network and it's now ready for working so the GSM module after powering itself on when a seam is entered it tries to it searches for the network and tries to connect itself with the network it tries to register itself with the network and for that for the first time it needs a 2 ampere peak current and this phenomenon is known as the transmission burst phenomenon so the jumper wires being incapable cannot provide this 2 ampere peak current supply and that's why the GSM module restarts again and again but can't connect to the network so the simple solution is choosing a material to provide the power supply a material which is capable of providing or which is capable of passing a 2 ampere current through it